Welcome to segment three of the Bible says this, what say you? Psalms 33 verse four, the A clause says, for the word of the Lord is right. I'm Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. I, got, I have with me my mighty first assistant, the Reverend John Amanchuku. And we've been talking about some of the issues that are going on today and giving you a thus saith the Lord concerning uh, these issues. And we've talked about uh, uh, our good friend, the Reverend Barber. We've talked about uh, his uh, accusing preachers of, of uh, bordering heresies because they prayed. Not because they swore or cursed at or made fun of or held up a head in effigy, uh, a bleeding head of the president of the United States, but because they went and they prayed for him. They prayed for him. Now, who's borderlining theological heresies is our good friend, the Reverend Barber. Mm -hmm. It is heresies for a preacher in a turn back collar to speak in favor of that which God calls an abomination. Mm -hmm. Reverend Barber's done that. It is heresies for a preacher to march in favor of the so-called woman's right to choose. All unborn babies are innocent. No unborn baby has ever committed any crime. And yet in this country, approximately 4,000 babies are aborted per day. And 1,876 of them are from the African-American community. Right. And the kids look just like Reverend Barber. And they and uh, and uh, we didn't hear his, his, him say anything when uh, our president said to Planned Parenthood, the killer, the leading killer by far of people, God bless you, why uh, 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 when, when uh, Hillary Clinton, uh, when she was campaigning and she received her, her, her Planned Parenthood's endorsements, she said to Planned Parenthood, that's something that we need to say to you that's long overdue. <laughs> and she said, thank you. And when Loretta Lynch likened transgenderism oh. to the civil rights oh, movement my and Lord. the plight there, uh, thereof, oh, my. Reverend Barber said nothing. Our, 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 our mighty fight, the That's fight right. to recognize our beautiful color. We, yeah. were, we were being treated uh, like we were second class citizens, not because we were practicing immoral behavior, right. not because we were involved in a lifestyle that if every human being practiced that lifestyle, it would mean the extinction of the entire human race right. within a hundred years or so, mm -hmm. but because, simply because our neck, nose is a little thicker, lips mm. are a little thicker, skin is brown without even having to lay in the sun. Come on here. And yet we suffered in this country. And for, for, for uh, uh, Loretta Lynch, mm. first female attorney general, African-American, to compare her and the president, mm. the fight of fake people. Also called transgender because a transgender male right. is a, a man who thinks he's a woman. He's a fake woman. If Well, he's not a woman at all. I'm giving too much credit. To compare that to the civil rights movement is wrong. Now, let's, let's talk just for a minute. Now, a Reverend Barber had, had mentioned the book of Amos, Amos chapter 2. And I, and I went to Amos and I read the scripture. And he is right in terms of what Amos says. Amos chapter 2, it was verse 6, that said, Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions and for four, which is a Hebrew idiomatic expression that means time is up. You sin one time too many. I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they have sold the righteous for silver and the poor for a pair of shoes. That is so true uh, that, that, uh, that pant after the dust of the earth that pant after the dust of the earth on the head of the poor and turn aside the way of the meek and a man and his father will go into the same maid. He didn't mention that part. For a man and his father having sex with the same woman. He didn't mention the sexual immorality. To mm. profane my holy name. Right. It is true. God did uh, convict Israel for that wickedness. Now, my position, our position is not that the poor should be sold for a pair of sandals, that mm -hmm. a man should be sold for silver. Right. Our position is simply this, that there's got to be more than one approach. The, the, the war on poverty after, after all of these years, uh, since it was launched in the 60s, Johnson mm -hmm. put, put a, a war on poverty and it has not worked. It has right. not moved the needle so that there are other things to be said, such as, I want you to get something for me, uh, 
to uh, turn to uh, Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 10, and also read for me Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 17. Proverbs, well, chap chapter 10 and verse 4, excuse me. Chapter 10 of Proverbs and verse 4 says what? It says, he becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, mm -hmm. but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. Liberals never quote this particular passage. Now, this may not be applicable to every poor person, but wouldn't it make sense to say that the Bible teaches you that one of the ways that you become poor is that you don't have a good work ethic. Dealing with sl slack hands means you don't have a good work ethic. And in this country, we pay people not to work. How about let's look at uh, uh, Proverbs 21 and 17. Proverbs 21 and 17 says what? He that loveth pleasure mm -hmm. shall be a poor man. Yes. He that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. Listen, if you love partying, you love pleasure, and right. you love playing the video games. Turn you, up. You, you, you don't want to get, you won't work two and three jobs. You won't put in the midnight oil. You can love that lifestyle if you want to, but you're going to end up poor. And in terms of, uh, you know, today we treat poverty as though it is a disease. But Psalms 19 and 1 tells us that there are some things that's worse than being poor. What mm -hmm. does 19 and 1 say? Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity. Yes than he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. While you get verse 22 of the same chapter, notice that there are some things that are worse than poverty. It's like having no integrity. It's better to be, to be poor and walk in your integrity. And I'll tell you something, the integrity is poor, won't be poor for long because integrity and a good work ethic will raise you from that place of poverty and put you in another place altogether. But for those who are poor who are watching this, don't let anybody treat you like you're diseased, that you have, you're right. a leper, that there's right. something wrong with you. There are worse things than poverty. Uh, the, the, the 22nd verse says what? The desire of a man is his kindness, uh -huh. and a poor man is better than a liar. A poor man is better to be poor than to be a liar. <laughs> it's better to be poor than to say to people when you know better, if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. Then to say to people when you knew your thinking was better, when you said, uh, I, be I am evolving uh, on the definition of marriage when all the time you were for same-sex marriage. See, there, there are some bad things. And, and whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, a liberal, conservative, libertarian, or whatever, lying is worse than a liar is worse than being poor. I want you to read for me Psalms 19 and 17. Let's see what that says for a moment here. Praise of Psalms 19 and 17 says what? Uh, not Psalms, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, preacher. Proverbs 19 and 17. Uh, you know, Patrick Wooden would look at Proverbs and see Psalms, so pray for me. Uh, Proverbs 19 and 17 says what? He that hath pity upon the poor mm. lendeth unto the Lord. Who? Lend, lendeth unto the Lord. Who that hath pity on the poor? He that hath pity. He, he, he. he. Now, what, what, what's my point? The Bible teaches that we can't just leave caring for the poor up to a government program. Right. See, liberals be, believe and, and progressives believe that uh, they want the government and taxpayer money to do it because they're not going into their pockets <laughs> to help anybody. Oh, no, 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 no. They're not going to reach into their pocket right. and give a dime. A new study that came from uh, the non-governmental uh, sector newspaper called the Philanthropic Chronicle shows that even poor conservatives are more generous than wealthy liberals, according to a new study uh, that poor conservatives, that conservatives who make 25000 a year or less give 16% of their income to charity, whereas liberals who make 100000 to 200000 or less give less than 3.3% of their income, and the 200000 or more give less, gave less than 4.5% of their income. See, because liberals, their argument is, if, whether it's Reverend Barber or any of the rest of them, if you listen to them, their argument is let the government pay for it. Let the government give us care from the womb to the tomb. Government care. Government 
solution to this, government solution to that. It doesn't make us wicked because we believe that there may be another way. Mm -hmm. There may be, you know, how about churches? Right. We do it here. How about churches helping right. the poor? That's right. How about solutions that help the poor that doesn't that doesn't uh, call them to be a prisoner of a government handout right. forever? Right. Oh, I remember coming up on welfare and when our mom would when my mom would work to get off Me welfare, too, how they would cut off. That's right. And how the the trap is set mm. that if you try to get off of this program, we're going to get you because they know that we can keep right. you on this program. You'll vote for us. Right. They want to buy votes by giving you things, giving you things. Yes, it's much easier to get programs and things passed if you're giving out goodies because people want free stuff. But that free stuff makes you, you get hooked on the titty. Yes, you do. You get hooked on the government nipple. And now there you are getting pennies on the dollar, getting a little bit of a check when you could work Use your own mind. I want you to go to what T Timothy says about what happens that if a man don't work. What does the Bible say there, preacher? Second Thessalonians 3 yes, Second Thessalonians. And 10 says, yes, sir. For even when we were with you. Even, uh-huh. This, watch this strong language. Talk we now. commanded you. Preach, preacher. That if any would not work, neither should he eat. Wow. Wow. Well, I know what you're saying. Well, what about folk? What about the working poor? Listen. Get another job. Keep on working. We live in a capitalist system. Right. And in capitalism, there's going to always be differences right. in income. Mm -hmm. Now, our Constitution promises us the, the, the right to the pursuit of life, liberty, and happiness. Mm -hmm. It does not guarantee the outcome. That's good. That's you, good. You got to be willing, my friends, to take advantage of this nation. I want to say to the poor out there, as we wrap this up, and preach, mm -hmm. I want you to jump in. At it, yes. You're going to take us out. Yes. There's a reason why people cross deserts, people get into boxcars, people do all kinds of things mm. to get into America. Mm. Because they know that if they, if they can get here, legally or illegally, right. this is still the land of promise. It's right. still an a, a place that offers a greater opportunity. Right. I say to my friends, don't you be born here. Don't you be raised here. Mm. Don't you let this be the place of your nativity and everybody else comes here and take advantage of what America has to offer and you lose out and depend on a government handout. Well, if you need it for a minute, take it. If you need it for a moment, go on it. If you need it, but just know that it is not the cure-all, nor is it the answer. The best solution is your own brain, your own ingenuity, your mm -hmm. own mind, and trust in the God of the Bible. Preacher, take us out. And I tell you what, coming up as a child, we were on uh, welfare for a little bit of time, mm -hmm. and my mother as worked. Was we. Right. Two jobs to yes, make sir. sure that, it, that we didn't remain on welfare. Mm. I saw her many times leaving in the morning, A fine but coming lady. back in the morning. Yes, sir. My mother worked her hands to the bone mm. to make sure that her children, her four children, could receive the best. And she knew that the system yes. was not the best thing for her family. Now, how many children? Four children. One lady. That's right, one lady. Mm. She did it. And I want to do this, Bishop Wooden, if, if, if I may. Yes, sir. Since it's right to pray and we covered all that. Yes, sir. I want to pray for Reverend Barbara. Amen. I want to take this remaining time and to pray for him and pray that God will turn his heart. Yes, sir. I, I pray that you will understand the essence of Amos 3 and 3 since you brought up Amos mm. about two uh, walking together and not being in agreement. Oh, my. You know, how can you walk together and, and, and not agree? Can two walk together except they be agreed? That's yes, right. I want to pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, yes, we Lord ask Jesus. right now mm. that you would turn the heart of Reverend Barber, yes, Lord that Jesus. he will put first the kingdom of God mm. and its people, yes, that Lord. he will put first the unborn, that he will put first those, oh God, who are in this country, oh Lord. Mm. We pray right mm. now that you will not allow the divisiveness of political parties to turn his heart away from you, mm. but we pray, oh God, that yes, his heart yes, will be yes. open to hear the real gospel and mm. to preach the historical Jesus. Uh, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And, and uh, I'm sure, uh, listen, uh, uh, all of you out there, 
If the Lord lead you to pray for us, That's please right. pray. pray for if us. you want to post it, please pray because we all need prayer. And that includes the president. And to pray is not theological malpractice. The Bible says this. What say you?